So a new discovery in Antarctica. Researchers find new life under an ice shelf, and the discovery was an accident. The Earth has just frozen up, and we have lost half of the population. Frozen landscapes stretch endlessly, and once thriving cities now lie dormant under layers of ice. The struggle for resources intensifies as humanity grapples with the unforgiving cold. Daylight is fleeting, and the sun's feeble attempts to pierce through the icy clouds provides little relief. This is 2030, and we are living in an ice age. Yes, you heard that right. In recent times, Earth's climate has thrown us some unexpected curveballs, with summer temperatures in Europe soaring past 46 degrees Celsius and South Africa experiencing surprising snowfalls with temperatures plummeting to minus 10 degrees Celsius. As scientists grapple with these extremes, the spectrum of predictions widens. Some urge preparations for intensified heat waves, while others foresee the possibility of a new ice age or a prolonged cooling period stretching across millions of years. Across its 4.5 billion year existence, Earth has witnessed cyclical ice ages. This has led scientists to predict another severe cold spell in the near future. So what if a new ice age is on the horizon, set to make its debut in 2030? Let's delve into the possibilities and implications of this hypothetical scenario. But before we jump in, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Now, don't panic. We're not talking about woolly mammoths strolling down the street. We're currently in the cozy embrace of an interglacial period, a geological interval where Earth enjoys a warmer average temperature. But let's play with the idea of the real cold making a comeback. Our savvy researchers are digging through the freezer of time, and they have examined ice samples from Greenland and Antarctica. These frozen time capsules unveil the Earth's climatic secrets from the past 800,000 years. But we're not stopping there. Sediment at the ocean's bottom becomes our time-traveling guide, allowing us to peek tens of millions of years into Earth's frosty history. And trust me, rocks and sediment spill the tea on climate change from hundreds of millions of years ago. The Huronian Ice Age kicked off around 2.4 billion years ago. Back then, Earth basked in 15% less sunlight, giving it a cool vibe. Primitive algae decided to play oxygen DJ, swapping out methane, a potent greenhouse gas, from the atmosphere. The result? Earth hit the deep freeze for a whopping 300 million years. But fear not, because at the equator, there were still areas without permafrost. The next ice age, the Cryogenian era, wasn't so mild. This era began 700 million years ago, and it wasn't your average cold snap. It was the most severe deep freeze in our planet's history. At the equator, where you'd expect tropical vibes, temperatures rarely rose above a bone-chilling minus 20 degrees Celsius. Negative 50 degrees Celsius and below became the new normal for the rest of the globe. Believe it or not, scientists speculate that even the vast seas embraced the frost, freezing to the very bottom. Poles weren't spared either. Dry ice or solid carbon dioxide adorned water ice and gave Earth the appearance of a colossal snowball from space. So, what might have Earth looked like during this icy extravaganza? Imagine a giant snow globe with only a few bacteria and algae near the hot springs daring to defy the freeze. For a visual teaser, check out NASA's snapshot of Saturn's moon Enceladus. Its snow-white surface reflects a whopping 99% of the sun's light, a possible mirror image of Earth during the Cryogenian period. This icy affair lasted until some tenacious survivors clung to life amidst the frozen landscape. Fast forward to the Paleozoic era, where the Andean Saharan Ice Age took the stage about 450 million years ago, lingering for a cool 30 million years. This time, glaciers measuring a staggering 3 kilometers occasionally ventured into subtropical latitudes. Yet, compared to the Cryogenian, it was more of a chill session, temperatures only slightly cooler than our present-day climate. However, this Ice Age didn't end on a casual note. Cue the ominous music for the Great Dying or the Permian Extinction, Earth's largest mass extinction catastrophe. Picture this, a catastrophic chain reaction triggered by the thawing Earth. One hypothesis suggests the explosion of a methane hydrate bomb. As frozen methane in the ground warmed up, it erupted into the atmosphere like a colossal fountain, displacing a significant portion of oxygen. The result was an inhospitable environment for life, which led to the extinction of 70% of terrestrial and a staggering 96% of marine life forms. It was the ultimate deep freeze disaster. 
So, scientists have been on the quest to understand what gives Earth its occasional chill. One significant player is the sun's activity, particularly solar flares. When these flares take a break, Earth experiences a drop in temperature. It's a cosmic game of heat and cold. To test this theory, American physicist Robert Ehrlich created a computer model of solar plasma behavior. It turned out that its fluctuations coincide with the periodicity of glaciation on Earth. The light of the sun is sometimes obscured from us by galactic gas and dust clouds. This natural occurrence contributes to fluctuations in Earth's climate. Explaining the Earth's frosty rhythms, the Serbian scientist Militin Milankovic attributed changes to our orbit and axial tilt to the gravitational interactions with the Moon and other planets. It's a slow process that takes place over cycles of thousands of years. Now, imagine Earth as a celestial ice skater twirling around the Sun. The distance it maintains from our star, combined with solar activity and axial tilt, influences the climate. When Earth takes a step back, an area of glaciers increases and, like all white surfaces, reflects the sun's rays back into space. This makes our planet even colder, and glaciers start growing in size again. The process continues for millions of years. Volcanic eruptions also have a role in the cooling ensemble. Their emissions can affect the atmosphere as they trap sunlight and contribute to cooler temperatures. Meanwhile, the world's ocean is like Earth's natural air conditioner. It absorbs carbon dioxide and influences the overall atmospheric warmth. Continental plate shifts form mountains, and steep mountain ranges can draw carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. As erosion exposes new rock, it leads to a chemical reaction between minerals on hill slopes and CO2 in the atmosphere, weathering the rock and using carbon dioxide to produce carbonate minerals. Scientists attribute the onset of the last ice age to a combination of factors around 35 million years ago. This late Cenozoic Ice Age witnessed cycles of intensely cold glacial periods and milder interglacial epochs. Currently, in the Holocene epoch, an interglacial period spanning 11,700 years, our climate is not static. Warm and cold millennia alternate within this time frame. The last significant glaciation, starting around 110,000 years ago and ending roughly 9,700 to 9,600 years ago, was succeeded by the thaw and the conclusion of the Little Ice Age from the 14th to the 19th century, noted as the coldest time in 2,000 years. Since the late 19th century, Earth has experienced a warming trend. However, historical patterns suggest that robust glaciation periods tend to recur every 10,000 years prompting some scientists to anticipate a return to colder climates in the near future. Despite the recent global warming and glacier meltdown, the substantial emission of greenhouse gases is currently acting as a deterrent to the advancement of glaciers. However, nature operates on its own timeline, and scientists anticipate that eras of strong glaciation may resurface in the next hundred or even a thousand years. Interestingly, some scientists propose an unexpected twist in this story. They argue that global warming could paradoxically contribute to global cooling. One model suggests that as the Arctic Ocean warms, ice retreats and evaporated water falls as snow in subpolar regions, forming new glaciers. The concern is that this process might create a barrier hindering the warm Gulf Stream from reaching the polar seas, potentially leading to a rapid growth of ice sheets. So what would happen if we enter a new ice age? In this hypothetical event, our planet would undergo substantial changes similar to those observed over 10,000 years ago during the last glaciation. The weight of glaciers would reshape mountains and hills, and vast areas of soil would face alterations due to the withdrawal of water from the oceans, leading to lowered sea levels. During the previous ice age, land bridges formed between continents, submerging regions like Canada, Scandinavia, the British Isles, northeastern Europe, and Russia under thick ice sheets. If a similar scenario occurs in the future, it could pose challenges for human societies. Some projections suggest a temperature drop of about 10 degrees Celsius at the equator, with temperatures in the north and south potentially reaching minus 50 degrees Celsius. This could impact agriculture, potentially leading to challenges similar to those faced after the Toba supervolcano eruption 74,000 years ago, where a limited number of human ancestors survived a volcanic winter. The consequences would extend to a global geopolitical landscape, with borders potentially shifting due to lower sea levels. Scientists predict a 150-meter decrease in ocean levels, which will lead to geographical changes such as the potential merging of Malaysia and most Indonesian islands into a single landmass, the reconnection of Sri Lanka with India and Ethiopia merging with Yemen. 
Water bodies would also undergo transformations, with the possibility of the Mediterranean Sea becoming isolated from the global ocean. This separation could have implications for global maritime trade and connectivity. Now, what about the impacts on North America and Europe? Well, imagine waking up in Florida or California to a landscape resembling Alaska. This shift would likely affect the southern United States, leading to challenges like crop failures, food shortages, and potential infrastructure strains. Mass migration southward would probably occur, with regions like Australia, New Guinea, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Southeast Asia maintaining a warm climate suitable for agriculture. This shift might alter the geopolitical landscape because it will potentially elevate countries like India and Brazil due to their temperature climates and newly fertile lands. However, challenges would arise and experts express concerns about feeding billions of refugees as they predict potential conflicts over food resources in regions with favorable climates. So, what solution do you propose for these challenges? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video and subscribe for more content like this.